It's time for the Splash Live from Civic Center TV, featuring stories from and about people like you in the greater West Bloomfield area. Simulcast on cable, 89.3 Lakes FM, social media, and the web. Now live from Green Media Center on Walnut Lake Road, it's the Splash Live! Live, local, and social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Thank you so much for joining us. Another day, another opportunity to talk to the community. I am your host, Kevin McIntosh. And as we get straight into it, the August primary is only days away, but... Early voting has already started for residents right here in all four of our communities at a few specific locations. So with us right here on the splash live on location, we have our very own Jake Schaff at the early voting site. How you doing, Jake? Gavin, good morning. I am here live outside the West Bloomfield Township Public Library on this beautiful August morning where early voting has been underway for the last few days and will continue for the next couple. Now, today is Thursday, which means that the voting hours are going to be a little different than they've been in the days past. Mm-hmm. To, the voting hours for Thursdays are going to start at 12 o'clock noon today and will go until 8 o'clock p.m. And then tomorrow, Friday, hours will return to their original time from 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. So a lot of opportunities to still vote. I was speaking with West Bloomfield Township uh, Clerk Debbie Binder this morning, who said that it has been a very smooth process so far. Lots of votes coming in. Uh, Not quite as high as it's been in the years past, but it's the primary, so that's not completely out of the ordinary but every vote still counts kevin so if anyone's watching this who still hasn't voted come on down we're glad to have you down here and your vote matters and will play a big role in deciding these elections very very soon great information jake and we appreciate you out there live on location west bloomfield township public library for early voting if you are interested in early voting you can get all to the west bloomfield township public library right now you'll probably even see jake as he is live right now we appreciate you and go out there and beat that uh long lines that we're possibly expecting for early voting thank you again for the story jake absolutely kevin thank you Yes, and as we continuously keep you updated with voting as August primaries approach, just to let you know, another location that you can vote at, Waterford Oaks Activity Center, 2800 Watkins Lake Road. That's in Waterford, by the way. So a lot of things going on. You want to find out more, go to wbtownship.org for more information regarding that. Or, of course, you can visit them on their website, oaklandcountyblog.com or Facebook at Oak. Gov, by the way, for more information. There's been a lot of celebrating right here in our own community about a lot of new things in Greater West Bloomfield lately, but for some, they have focused their celebrations on tradition that has lasted generations. And Civic Center TV's very own Tyler Keith has a story. In Orchard Lake, a bell tolled 150 times, celebrating 150 years of worship and one of our longest standing communities in Greater West Bloomfield. This is Orchard Lake Community Church Presbyterian, a church with deep ties for many families in Greater West Bloomfield. Dr. Catherine Kangany's great-great-great-grandparents, Caroline and Colin Campbell, founded the church in 1874. 150 years later, she says her ancestors would be overjoyed at what this community has become. Well, although it was the Campbell's idea to found the church, it was a community project from the very beginning. And when the church was founded in 1874, it was a seasonal church. So I think they would be floored to see not only the community having grown and having sustained the church for the summers, but now that it's a year-round, very active congregation, I think they would be floored. For Patty Rothley and Becky Sasek, their connections to the church span four generations and play a special role in their family. It's very special and unusual, to, I think, to have that many generations worship here. And now her children are all coming here, and it's just been a wonderful experience. The church, like any community, is about connection, providing a place to be together and build bonds that strengthen our community 
during the challenges of life. I think this church came to be because the community pulled together and there have been times of challenge for this congregation and it has pulled together to meet and, and uh, solve those challenges. And so I think that's the legacy from 1874 to now. I truly believe that what we've founded for 150 years would be the best legacy possible that we are serving our neighbors, our friends, loved ones, and strangers in love, sharing with them as we are able uh, the good news of Jesus Christ that we believe here at the Orchard Lake Church and supporting them through tough times. Ultimately, it's joy that brings the people of Orchard Lake Community Church together, a friendly family of folks from across Greater West Bloomfield and beyond. You make friends when you come here because everyone is so wonderful and you serve on committees together and you do things together and then you just feel like this is your home. Everybody in the church always works together as a team. We support so many different charities and anything you might want to be involved in. I think the lessons of the church are that we want to love each other and support each other through the tough times and the good times. It was a labor of love for an awful lot of people and this congregation and this community ought to feel really proud of that legacy. It's a legacy that was no accident, sown through generations of an emphasis on helping each other and helping other people. Many communities of faith do as we do, but I wanted to emphasize today all that we have accomplished together and the previous generations have accomplished and bequeathed to us what a beautiful heritage we have here of people who have served locally and then have gone nationally to serve in many different ways through the Presbyterian Church, but not only through our denomination, but other charitable groups and internationally. The friendliness and the feeling of community and the service in this church is amazing. I think there's a lot of people that belong to this church that are very committed to keeping things going. And it's a very welcoming community, so it's not like we're you know isolated. We love when new people come to the church and there's always some way to get involved. If you believe in something that much, you can will it to happen. And this group of people from 1874 to the present that have put their pennies together and put their talents together, that you can achieve what you set out to do if you've got a group of people who believes in it and works together to get it done. I hope my great, great, great grandchildren will be here in 150 years to keep celebrating. This church community has seen Greater West Bloomfield through its early development through crises, through decades upon decades of our local history and the history of the world, continuing to be one of our longest standing communities and a group that has great influence across Greater West Bloomfield. At Orchard Lake Community Church Presbyterian, Tyler Keeft for Civic Center TV. Such a heartwarming story right there. Thank you again, Tyler, by the way. And for more information regarding Orchard Lake Community Church's 150th anniversary celebration, including more events that will be coming up in September, visit their website, olccp.com, or of course they are on social media as well, olccp on Facebook. Go ahead and give them a search as well. From 150 years of celebration, to 40 years of celebration. Friends of the Library Book Talks 40th anniversary event is actually coming up very, very soon. And we actually had an opportunity to talk to one of the members of the Friends of the West Bloomfield Township Library. So with us actually right now is a member of the board of the Friends of the Library for West Bloomfield Township Public Library. We have Diane Henderson, actually co-chair or chair member of the Book Talks Committee also. And Diane, can you just tell us first and foremost uh, how Book Talk started and how it has evolved over the years. I'll do my best with that. Um, the truth is that um, as much as I've tried to get a detailed history, um, no one seems to know exactly how it started. I do know that George mm. Keith was the primary and the only facilitator of the Book Talks for um, quite a number of years. Um, and it wasn't until I got involved in 2005 when I went to my first one that I thought, oh, this is cool. And in 2007, when I started being a facilitator, I found out nobody even had a list of all of the books and things that had been done. So I created that, and so that made me the historian. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, my knowledge um, came from bits and scraps of paper and, and what we call the, the bookmarks when we publish our upcoming books. Yeah, but you know what? I love, you took, you, you took initiative. 
you found interest in the event in an organization you you saw something that was a need for uh, a, a need and you took the initiative to go there and start keeping record of things i completely understand that and and that just preserves the accurate history of everything going on 40 years and we want it to be decades longer. So, of course, I completely understand the reason why you did that. Now, in the years that you've done it so far, can you just talk about your favorite memory or experience so far? Probably my, I have two favorite memories. One would be the very okay. first book talk I ever went to. Um, it was shortly after I'd moved back to Detroit. And one of the people who facilitated at that point was Sandra Sutherland, who had actually been my high school forensics teacher. And then we became good friends. And so she said, why don't you come to a book talk? And I went and I was enchanted. I had never been in a book discussion before. I'm an avid reader. I've been mm. an avid reader all my life. But this was back in 2005. And there wasn't a whole lot of uh, book groups going on at that time. And then the second most right. memorable one is probably the one in 2007 when I did my very first book talk. Um, and that was the... Um, in 2007, it was, um, I'm trying to, A Thousand Splendid Sons. And so that was, um, mm -hmm. wow, it's not only cool to participate in one of these, it's even cooler to be one of the ones facilitating the conversation. Interesting. Okay, I want to break that down a little bit more. But with us right now on the Splash Live, Diane Henderson, member of the board for the Friends of the Library and chair member for the Book Talks Committee for West Bloomfield Township Public Library. Um, can you just describe the scene? Like, how is this set up exactly? It, it seems like there's just one book, one host, person talking about it, and there's an open discussion. Can you just describe it a little bit more for us? Yeah, um, we meet monthly at the library. We meet on Thursday nights mm -hmm. and then again on Friday morning. So we have two discussions of each book because there are folks who want to come at yeah. night and folks who want to come in the morning. Um, and the, the person who's leading the discussion for that particular month um, does some background work, um, looking at reviews, getting discussion questions. Um, and then we show up at the library and, and with a group of people that can range anywhere from eight to 25. Um, when it gets to 25, it gets a little chaotic, of course. Um, but then we <laughs> ask questions, talk about the book. And in the best circumstances, we get a great conversation going amongst the people who are sitting there in the room with us. Um, we, we don't want it to be a class. Like We're that. not teaching the book. We're trying to have right, a discussion right. of the book. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like it just seems like a comfortable, casual uh, uh, space where you can just come and meet like minded people who are reading the same thing you and you just get to share your thoughts. Sometimes you you read something, you watch something, you consume something. You don't necessarily have someone else to talk about that with so and just bounce perspectives off of so i like that i like that as a creative yeah. myself how do you feel like book talks have impacted west bloomfield the west bloomfield community and the reading culture in general here i think that um, one of the things i have to acknowledge <clears throat> is that the west bloomfield township public library is considered one of the leading libraries in the country um there aren't a whole lot of uh, five star from the library journal so, so West mm -hmm, Bloomfield, mm -hmm. uh, li the library, exists in a community that has a real commitment to, to libraries and to reading. So it's a great community for something like this to happen. And it offers all of those avid readers, readers in West Bloomfield a place to come and talk about books. And, and we try and focus on books that we think will give them a good conversation. Not every book is good for a book group or a conversation. Um, so we, what point. we're trying to do is to give all those avid readers in West Bloomfield, a place to come join other avid readers and talk about books that people are reading. Um, sometimes they're current books, sometimes they're classics, sometimes they're ones right. that have been out for maybe 10 years that people haven't seen. But it's, yeah, let's delve deeper into books, you readers. I get it, I get it 100%. And we are always adv advocates for uh, reading a physical book more than anything. I mean, reading in general, but I, I'm always an advocate for physical books myself also and audio books. I want to talk about your partnership. You have some uh, relationships you all have with Schuler Books also locally. And I like that. That's local organizations working with local businesses. Can you just talk about how that partnership enhances the entire experience for participants? It, it's a fabulous partnership. Um, I think it, it what, what we get from Schuler's is amazing. They sometimes bring in an author mm -hmm. to the library. 
Um, the Friends is generally involved in all of that so that it gives readers in West Bloomfield the opportunity to meet some authors who are making the rounds. Um, and, and they also, uh, Schuler's also, um, it is good. They're donating books, for example, for door prizes at our upcoming anniversary party. They've donated 12 books, okay. um, four copies of, of books, that, three copies of four books we're gonna be doing this fall. And so what, and then what I think Schuler's gets back from us, which makes it a partnership, is that it then mm. leads the people who are engaged with the friends to go to a real live honest bookstore, um, Schuler's bookstore. It, it's yep. a, you know, it, 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 yep. it's the not buying their stuff from Amazon. Sorry, not dissing Amazon, mm -hmm. or, but or, or buying <laughs> stuff online. But it, it's let's go engage yep. in a bookstore because there's nothing quite like wandering through a bookstore and seeing books. I know they're dangerous places for me. Um, I can go in looking for one book and leave with several. <laughs> that's a good problem to have though i love that and i and i love that like we said we are encouraging people to go to libraries go to bookstores and you know spend less time online and more time in line in a store behind somebody Absolutely. buying an actual book i get that right there hey diane we got to kind of wrap up but one last thing the 40th anniversary celebration for book talks let's just talk about this event specifically what makes it special what people can expect and things of that nature please august 8th i think what makes I think what makes it special is for a library and a volunteer organization at that library to do something like this for 40 years, that's a moment in time that can't be ignored. So that's why we decided we have a party. And on Thursday night, it's it's basically a party. Um, we're gonna have a very short mm -hmm. program. Um, we want people to come in, enjoy the refreshments. Um, there's gonna be a, a video showing of, we hope, every book that we've ever done, all 335 different books. Um, I doubt that we'll be able to get through all of them um, and then have refreshments and then have a conversation with other passionate readers who like to come to the library and who like to discuss books. So it's meant to be an anniversary party. Come and party with us. We love that. Thank you again for your time, for talking about it and for advocating for physical books. Once again, Diane Henderson, member of the board for the Friends of the Library, as well as chair member for the Book Talks committee right here at west bloomfield township public library we appreciate your time and information thank you i love doing it have a good day kevin physical books that's what we love here and we love supporting our local west bloomfield township public library and all of our local public libraries right here in our great community for more information regarding the friends of the library's 40th anniversary book talks event thursday august 8th visit the website wblib.org and click on the calendar tab go directly to august 8th you'll see it right there for you speaking of different things going on in the community giving you an opportunity to get out and see our neighbors the uh i should say west bloomfield high school robotics team hosting their second annual car show at the high school. The robotics team is a team of innovative high school students working each year to design and build robots to compete in different robotics competitions. And right now, this event is actually going to help benefit that robotics team. And with us live on the Splash Live, we have West Bloomfield High School student and robotics team member, Max Columbus. Thank you for joining us on the Splash, Max. Thanks for having me. Being a student, and an active robotics team member, West Bloomfield High School, with this car show coming up. What are your personal and team goals for this year's event? Each year when we host the event, we love to see everyone come out and participate in the event. We love to interact with the community, show off what we've kind of done in the last year, uh, get to know people, and fundraise a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, fundraise a lot of bit, actually. We could all use some funding to help us, you know, build uh, and, and gain capital and things of that nature. Real quick question, something you brought up kind of came to my head. Are you all showcasing some of the robots that you have built also? We're going to hope we can. Okay. Weather, let's hope the weather is good and that uh, everyone can come out and that the robots are ready. Yes, fingers crossed, right? Fingers, fingers crossed. But besides possibly seeing some robots, can you share some other unique or exciting elements that some attendees could expect to see at the show this year? We're going to have some music. Uh, we're going to have a food truck. Um, my sister is also selling bracelets. Uh, we're going to be inter walking around and talking to 
each of the car owners. Mm. Okay, okay, interesting. So we got a lot going on. You had me at food truck first and foremost, Max, but music, food, cars, robotics, a lot of things to learn. Even your sister selling bracelets. It seemed like a great, great time where the community is coming out and everyone's getting involved. With me right here on the Splash Live, West Bloomfield High School robotics team member and student Max Columbus talking about their upcoming second annual car show Sunday, August 11th at West Bloomfield High School. So since we are fundraising, Max, I'm not sure how, how privy you are on this information, but how do you feel or how do the proceeds from the car show benefit the West Bloomfield Robotics team? We add them to our account and then whenever we need like a new part or things to help us advance into mm. the season, we will use the money in our account to benefit us with our robot build or whatever else we need to use it for with our team. Right. I didn't think about that, Max. That's a good point. I don't know why in my head I'm just thinking everything that you all need, the school has already, and it's already provided. But when we're thinking about it and being honest, we're, we're talking about robots and, and, and technology. So a lot of these pieces are going to take some time to actually go out and purchase. So I, I understand the funding part of that now, and I appreciate you for breaking that down. Since we have been promoting this event, you've been promoting this event with your team, how have you seen the reaction or, or the response from the community in regards to this event? It's been a great response. Uh, we've, I know my family and has been going and hitting up different car shows and going to Woodward and handing out flyers. Mm -hmm. and we've actually seen it spread online other people have taken the flyer downloaded it shared it on facebook shared it with their friends and yeah. we're just seeing a great response in the aspect of it get the word is getting around yeah yeah good and that's what we want we want it to grow this is the second annual so the first one people came but the second one we want to continuously build off that momentum and get it even better uh why do you think community events like this play a big role in supporting local school organizations like the robotics team? Um, it helps us show off what we have worked on. We're able to show off our stuff. Uh, if anyone has questions about the kind of things we do, we can get people interested and work to build the next year or future years of the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point. Give people who are curious about robotics, people who are curious about cars in general, and give them a chance to come out there and kill t uh, two birds with one stone, actually be able to ask a lot of questions and pick your brain. With us right here on the Splash Live, Max Columbus, West Bloomfield High School robotics team member and student, talking about their upcoming car show Sunday, August 11, 8.30 West Bloomfield High School. I don't know if you know, do you know how the judging part of the show? I know there's a car show, so we're looking at a bunch of exotic cars, uh, uh, unique cars, exclusive cars, but how will the judging be done for these? Do you know? So it is broken up into a few different categories. I don't remember all the categories, but the team will actually walk around and we uh, will just pick which ones we feel are the best based on the categories that we have and what fits. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And with all these car advocates, fans, aficionados, and experts that'll be right there at the high school with you, how do you feel like the knowledge that they have can help you and your other robotics team members with the endeavors that you take on? Sometimes uh, someone may have good advice to share or they may say, this is a great team. We want to support them. We want to help them advance. So being able to share what we do and then get the feedback from others mm -hmm. shows what we could do right. if we get feedback. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, we, we appreciate the feedback. And, and like we said before, when we had you on before, you can see a lot of the correlation between cars, classic cars, and how they're made up in the engine, and robotics, and the different pieces and the elements that go into making these uh, equipment, essentially, is what we're talking about. What has been the most rewarding part of helping to organize such a big event like this? Um, you get to see firsthand how fundraising goes, and 
different methods to try. You know, if something doesn't work, you tweak it so that you can see it grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great response, too, by the way. You just pick some things apart. You kind of learn and you kind of move from there and, and figure out how, you know, what you can do better either next year or whatever the case may be. And with us right here, Max Columbus, West Bloomfield High School, robotics team member and student talking about the car show August 11th. Don't want to hold you up too much more, Max. Last thing, well, one of the last things before I let you go, I just want you to take some time to explain some of the achievements that the robotics team have actually made throughout the last year? Um, well, I would say um, getting the underclassmen hooked with robotics. Uh, we show up at freshman orientation or jump start, and in the room where all the clubs are, our team is there. We usually have a robot. We put some candy on the table and we talk to people we get we usually get a large amount of people to put their name down showing their interest mm. and it doesn't always happen that way when the school year starts but it's good to ha have a large list of interests to start mm -hmm. we've interacted with the community with the car show family mm -hmm. fun night some all girls events and helping out the cub scout teams and yeah. showing them what we can do yeah and that local and local, other local robotics teams. Uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. So it's about growing the team. It's about showing people what you do. It's about actually putting that, uh, putting that interest in other people, too. I love to see that. And I love to see the passion that you have for what you do also, Max. We appreciate your time. One last chance. Just tell people more about the event and why they should attend. August 11th is our second annual car show to come to see it it's free if you're participating it's twenty dollars uh you can register the day of venmo which is on the flyer uh check out wbhs robotics on social media mm -hmm. to stay in the loop uh and we look forward to seeing you there yes and we look forward to seeing you thank you again max for your time and your perspective on the upcoming second annual car show Sunday, August 11, 8.30 at West Bloomfield High School. We appreciate you, Max. Thanks for having me. Yes. And just like he said, you want to find out more information, possibly register, go directly to their Facebook and check out all the information. West Bloomfield Robotics on Facebook. Everything that you need to know, you can find out about the car show and robotics team in general as they continue to prepare for the second annual car show as well. We like to talk about different things that are beneficial, not only to school organizations, but organizations right here in our community. We will get to you and tell you how our West Bloomfield Fire Department may be receiving some benefits, but we'll get into that. We are live, local and social. It's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. Want to enjoy Civic Center TV on your social media? Find us on Instagram at Civic Center TV. Get notified when we upload one of our interviews, full episodes, and more. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Hello, I'm Chief Mike Patton of the West Bloomfield Township Police Department. We're here to say congratulations to Civic Center TV on their 1 million YouTube views here in the community. We enjoy a great partnership with Civic Center TV. They are one of our best community partners. I'm Chief Mike Patton. I'm proud to be one in a million. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to the splash, live. 
That's right, live, local, and social. It's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I am your host for today, Kevin McIntosh. I appreciate you for joining us. The Fire Fire Turnout Gear Program benefits a lot of Oakland County fire departments. As a matter of fact, dozens of fire rescue agencies across Macomb and Oakland counties will receive thousands of dollars in state grants to enhance their readiness and safety. And the Michigan Department of Labor and Economics Opportunity has awarded a total of $15 million to 187 fire and rescue agencies across Michigan, including right here, West Bloomfield Township. So with me on the Splash Live is Fire Chief for the West Bloomfield Township Fire Department, Greg Flynn. Thank you for being here, Chief. Good morning, Kevin. So as I'm kind of skewing through this article and looking at a few things, I just want your help on clarifying some things. I see that there will be a $266,000 grant awarded to West Bloomfield Township Fire Department. How do you feel like utilizing this can enhance your team's readiness and safety? Well, first and foremost, we want to thank our uh, state representatives that uh, put this package together along with uh, the Michigan Association of Fire Chiefs and the Michigan Professional Firefighters Union and all the stakeholder groups that were able to get this into the governor's budget for this year. Mm -hmm. You know, this uh, budget item, this grant program is going to help the fire service across the state of Michigan. And what it's really doing, Kevin, is it's providing a second set of fire gear to all of our firefighters. And the reason why that's important is because we know the amount of carcinogens or cancer car causing agents that can get onto fire gear during the fire suppression event or during an electric vehicle fire or any of the different hazards that they may go into that there's smoke or off gassing that happens during combustion, uh, we're able to now put that turnout gear that's contaminated into a cleaning process, a decontamination process, and then immediately move into the fresh clean gear, that second set of gear, and be ready to respond to the next incident. Very interesting. Another aspect as a regular resident of the community you don't necessarily think about, but I'm glad you put it out there. So this kind of my curious brain, uh, Chief, just asking, if you are dealing with equipment that is filthy or has been contaminated, how are we washing of those or how are we taking care of that before this uh, grant? Well, we've been very fortunate with uh, the support of, uh, of the community that uh, all our stations are equipped with what's called a, an extractor. It's a very specialized piece of washing equipment that is designed for fire gear. Mm. Uh, one set of gear pretty much fits in it at a time. So both the bottoms, the pants, the turnout pants and the turnout coat uh, kind of take apart. And if I can just show you a little bit here, Kevin, I Please. brought a coat up here with me. So, you know, many people are used to seeing this out, this exterior part of fire gear, but inside is where the real magic happens. And there's different layers within oh, the coat wow. that uh, provide both a thermal barrier, this kind of reflective here, and then there's also a water barrier that prevents all the water from coming down on the firefighters oh. and then going through their gear. So. We're preventing the water from coming in, which can uh, also prevent the heat from coming in so that we don't get the steam burns and all of the things that happen while your firefighters mm. are inside there. That exterior barrier also protects the firefighters from snagging on things that may have fallen uh, down or sharp edges and protects them. So that fire gear really encapsulates the firefighter as they move through uh, the fire environment and um, really sets them up uh, in the best position to extinguish the fire and, and, and more importantly, even uh, find our residents, uh, save lives and make a true impact on the community. Good point. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that perspective. Chief, uh, join us right here on the Splash Live, by the way. Fire Chief for West Bloomfield Township Fire Department, Greg Flynn. The, the kid in me is curious about this, especially since you just showed that uh, if you're watching on Civic Center TV. So the inside lining of it, there, if, they're, if you're battling a blaze and you have this hot coat on, and it's already the summertime, does this type of equipment help keep them cool? This is just a kid in me just curious about it. Like, how does that help when they're in the hot sun outside but then battling a hot blaze at the same time? Well, unfortunately, the equipment doesn't quite work as well in reverse. So uh -huh. that's why it's so important that our firefighters remain hydrated mm. uh, at the beginning of their shift, remain hydrated throughout. And then during a fire uh, incident, Kevin, what we'll do is we cycle our firefighters out, usually timing them with the amount of air that they have in their SCBA, their self-contained breathing apparatus. Okay. So as they come out of the fire to get a fresh tank and new air, 
we do what's called rehab. And in that process, we take their vital signs, their blood pressure, their pulse, their respiratory rate, we log those. And then we're hydrating while we're doing a bottle switch out on mm. that firefighter. So they'll take a brief rest. If the blaze is still going, we cycle the team through and re-equip them with fresh air and back in they go well hydrated. Okay, okay, thank you for answering that. Like I said, that was that, was, that should have been off the record. I should have just came up there and just talked to you personally, but I was curious about it, but thank you for explaining that. So I wanna kinda get back into this situation. I believe we talked about a story where we had upgraded radio communication systems. Now we're mm -hmm. talking about upgraded turnout gear. Can you just talk about how you see all of this um, actually benefiting and helping the response time for you all to uh, get to emergencies? Well, the gear side of things probably is less about the response time and more about uh, the fire gear, for example, Kevin, when I started, to where the fire gear is today and the technology that's uh, been integrated into okay. the fire gear, the, the thermal barrier that's there, the amount of heat that fire gear is able to take before the firefighters start to feel that heat is uh, just unbelievably uh, improved. Okay. In fact, in some ways, Kevin, it can be a little bit dangerous because it, it can give firefighters a sense of protection that maybe is taking them into mm. an even more dangerous area because they're not feeling the heat as much as uh, they used to. Wow. So that is why we communicate. So those the integration of the new upgrade with the radio system so that we can get better uh, radio frequency penetration into structures, inside of structures, right? Uh, that gives us better intel from inside the fire environment yeah. that they can communicate out to the incident commander and advise them and give them a picture, if you will, of what's going on inside the structure so we can deploy additional hose lines, additional crews to get in there, cool the fire, and then even a more interesting step, and it sounds like I'm going to need to get you into our Fire Ops 101 program Please. here in October. Yeah. We're going to go up and they're going to ventilate the structure, which allows the heat to escape out the uh, top of the structure and start to cool off the inside environment. So there's a lot of science behind what right. our firefighters mm -hmm. do every single day, and we enhance that. I know you've had Captain Lakowski on the program. His division's in charge of making sure our team's up to date on the latest and greatest in training. And all of those things together, the comms, the gear, the training, really we wrap our arms around this community with safety uh, and saving what's important to them, their pets, their belongings, and most importantly, their lives. We appreciate that. And I would I, I will love that invitation. I, I got to make sure my schedule is good because I want to bring my son, too. I think that would be so nice. One of my close friends is a firefighter also in the local area. So thank you for that invitation and information, by the way, Chief. Uh, don't want to hold you up too much longer, but uh, one of the last questions. What can the community do to support the fire department and ensure firefighters have necessary resources to perform for their duties safety, safely and effectively? Kevin, the most important thing is that the community doesn't need us, mm. right? I just want to let that set for a second, mm. that the community doesn't need us. Fire is everyone's fight, and fire prevention is the key that we never even start the fight, if you will. So making sure that you have working uh, smoke alarms, uh, testing those, having a, an escape plan with your family that you practice. And remember, we don't go to the street. We go to a safe spot away from where the trucks will be approaching. And uh, really understanding that we don't leave uh, items on the stove or in the oven unattended. Uh, and just really being smart around this time of year with your grills and making sure that they're cleaned and that there's not a pile up of grease and food debris at the bottom that can catch on fire and, and extend uh, along the exterior of the house. So all of those things, Kevin, that's what the community can do to support their firefighters. Put us out of business, right? Ooh. Put us out of work <laughs> is really what uh, what we want the message to be. I love it. And I know what you mean by that. I know what you mean. I don't know how, how people may take it, but essentially you're saying be careful. We don't want to have to call the fire department for those emergencies. So please be cautious. Hey. Chief, I appreciate your time. I know you're very, very busy, and I can ask a thousand questions, but we appreciate your time and effort. Fire Chief, West Bloomfield Township Fire Department, Greg Flynn, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Always a pleasure talking to uh, people of authority right here in West Bloomfield Township, talking about different things that are helping to benefit them so that they can help us in a way also. So we do appreciate uh, Chief Flynn for spending time to uh, talk to us again today. More information regarding other things happening in the community that we love to keep you updated about. 
regarding safety and water safety more specifically. Since it is the summertime, we know a lot of people are still spending time out on the water. And we did get some unfortunate news about a 21-year-old Detroit man drowning in a lake in Orchard, uh, Oakland County, as a matter of fact. So we wanna continuously put out more information of water safety. And that's why joining us right here on the Splash Live to talk more about water safety and those unfortunate events, we have Lieutenant Brian Burwell from the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. How are you today? Doing so well. Uh, it's unfortunate that we have to meet talking about things of this nature, but it, it, it is very, very important that we do get it out because essentially we've dealt with a number of different drownings in our Oakland, uh, Oakland County Lake. So can you just describe the recent drowning incidents in Oakland County and any common factors you have observed? Well, yeah, unfortunately, we're, we're, this is our 10th drowning this season, um, along with a number of boating accidents. You know, I think the higher temperatures we've been experiencing as a lot more people are partaking in the water. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a, a lot of the common factors in those are they're choosing to swim in areas where there's not lifeguards. Um, some are choosing to swim in areas that are not designated swim areas. And those always increase the risk of something happening. And in, in a lot of these situations, you know, with, with drownings, you know, it, people enter the water and within, you know, it's a nice sunny day, they start their morning off and they, you know, go out to the lake and then within seconds, you're in the fight for your life, you know, mm -hmm. and people in the water, panic sets in. So, you know, uh, you know, the biggest thing is to, you know, to swim, if you can, pick areas where there are lifeguards, especially if you're not a strong swimmer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the lack of flotation devices, you know, uh, life jackets and personal flotation devices not being available or mm -hmm. accessible. You, you know what, you, you mentioned a few things that I want to kind of dive into a little bit more, but I want to ask this next question, but thanks, thanks for providing that. How do communication barriers impact rescue efforts like the one, uh, the unfortunate incident that just recently happened? Yeah, the one you're referring to, the Kensington one, uh, it was unfortunate um, that there was a miscommunication. Uh, um, you know, today it's, it's more easier now, I think, to communicate than ever because of the apps on the phones that have translating apps and things like that. In this situation, the individual, I, I don't think he really felt comfortable maybe uh, uh, talking to certain people. He, he ran to a different area. Uh, I think waving your hands, pointing to the water. Uh, there was a bystander who did witness that drowning and uh, called and summoned authorities. The problem was that person had left the area. So some of the first responders weren't, weren't sure because normally when somebody goes underwater, there would be a family member or somebody reporting it. This gentleman had seen somebody go under was fairly confident. And with all credit to the, uh, the Kensington Metro Park Police, you know, they immediately initiate a rescue response, uh, even though there was some confusion that, right. hey, you guys are saying this is going on, but we don't know, nobody else is on shore. Uh, they didn't hesitate. They instantly activated our search and rescue team, which was responding. And that's the big thing is, is, is to get response going, get the fire, get the police, get the sheriff's office going. Right. We can always cancel that response if it's not needed. And that's the outcome we ultimately want is to get there and somebody say, hey, we were mistaken. And unfortunately, this situation, uh, you know, the, the gentleman lost his life. Yeah, yeah, very, very unfortunate. But I, I would love to take this as a learning lesson so we can try to prevent having an 11th uh, uh, incident this year. So thank you again. With us right here on the Splash Live, Lieutenant Brian Burwell, special, specialized units for Oakland County Sheriff's Office, just talking about the unfortunate drownings that's been happening in Oakland County and how we could possibly prevent those. So let's get into that part of it, if you don't mind, Lieutenant. What specific emergency capabilities and flotation devices should people be looking into or preparing before they even hit the water? You know, the, the biggest thing is, you know, not swimming alone, swimming with a buddy. You know, when you go out to the lake, you know, have somebody with you when you're going in the water. Uh, have some type of life jacket with you or flotation device. Make sure it's size appropriate. Uh, if you're taking small children to the uh, lake with you or to a swim area, again, there's a reason those swim areas are dedicated. That water is is doesn't have a quick drop off with inside a swim area. Mm. Um, so it's a it's a safe area for you to swim. When you venture outside those swim areas, you know, sometimes the lake will drop off quickly, which will put you in a little bit colder water, which will cause you to cramp up, could cause you obviously panic sets in. 
Um, one of the things um, I would say is that when you, if you are charged with, you know, overseeing small children in the water, you know, drownings happen in less than seconds. You know, you're talking the potential for Correct. within 20 to 20 seconds for somebody to drown or less. You know, that you can't be sitting there reading a book. You can't be texting Oof. messaging. You can't be taking time. If you have children in the water, you have to keep your eyes on them. And, and along with anybody who's in the water is, you know, it's not just about observing the people you came to the beach with, but everybody's looking out for everybody's safety. And this Kensington one you spoke about, this gentleman was in the water with his small child. He looked over, he was watching everybody, and that's when he saw somebody struggling. Um, and so everybody should be watching out for each other when you're at the beach. Don't just focus on the people you came with. Correct. Focus on everybody. Correct. And, um, you know, the other thing, too, is all public beach areas, they do have rescue equipment there. They have a, oh. a throwable device. They have um, usually some type of rowboat. Uh, always at the first sign of trouble, call 911 and get first responders responding immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Some information that I wasn't privy to, but some of that equipment being available at some of these spots and locations. So I think people should be a lot more aware of that also. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe you did mention that you all offer some type of water safety classes or courses at the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. Is that correct? Absolutely. Sheriff Bouchard, uh, I think we lead in uh, education around the area for our boater safety classes and various other safety classes we offer all free here at the Sheriff's Office. Uh, of course, with our partners at the DNR, uh, we, we have a, a great work relationship with the uh, Department of Natural Resources, the conservation officers. Uh, we teach joint classes. We also, wow. Oakland County participates in the Southeast Michigan Dive Group. We work with multiple agencies. Uh, we do the boat show with Wayne County, mm. uh, Macomb County, and other places. These classes are all free um, right here at our search and rescue building, and um, we offer them also satellitely. So if you go to the DNR website, you can sign up for them. And, um, you know, we're always looking to, you know, push out more education on that. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And we'll we'll be here to spread that and, and, and spread, you know, continuously push that also. Um, before we let you go, uh, Lieutenant, if you don't mind, are there any steps being taken currently to increase public awareness about uh, water safety and importance of these flotation devices and other devices we have available? Well, our, our, again, our sheriff has taken a, a big initiative with pushing uh, safety. These last few years, we've been pushing our boater safety classes back uh, okay. and rolling more of them out. Um, we are in, in talks right now with uh, different legislation in Lansing to try to come up with more grants available for some of the other counties uh, to make people more aware of. You know, gotcha. uh, Oakland County does offer our class are available for anyone to attend, but we also need the other surrounding areas to be doing education as well and, and, and unfortunately there's not a lot of reimbursement or funding available sometimes for those classes and we're hoping to work with uh, some legislation to maybe see if we can roll out some grants for that yeah sounds like it'll be very very helpful if we were to get a little bit more funding we know the, the state is is doing different things with allocating funding but hopefully we get any and everything that we need to increase public awareness in regards to this so we can like limit if not stop these fatalities yeah. before the end of the year. Hey, we appreciate you again. Thank you again, Lieutenant, for being here. Any additional information you want to let the community know before we let so, you go? Just to just remember, you know, those life jackets are so important, those throwable devices, having them on your boats. Uh, yeah. And, you know, the biggest thing is if, if, if there is an emergency, you know, I, I can't stress this enough, people sometimes don't realize, you know, taking a first aid or a CPR class is so important. Mm. So if an unfortunate incident does happen, you know what to do. And, you know, uh, so, you know, just not taking the, the water safety classes, but also take a first aid and a CPR class. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great information. I'm glad we had the word from someone like you where it actually matters. Thank you again, yeah. Lieutenant Brian Burwell, Specialized yeah. Units for Oakland County Sheriff's Office, talking about water safety. We appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Absolutely. You have a better one, sir. It's always a pleasure, like we said, as we try to be proactive. We want everyone to get out on the water and have fun, but we want you to actually return home at the end also. So a lot of great information. Go to oakgov.com for more information to find out about those classes that they offer as well. Trying to tip, uh, turn things more upbeat. We'll tell you things going on in the community that you can also attend and have a great time. Right now, we are live, local and social. It is the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. 
we'll be right back with the Splash Live. Missed one of our live broadcasts or one of your local municipal meetings? Check it out online at civiccentertv.com. Every meeting, show, and interview on demand. Thank you for watching and listening to Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Hi, I am Steve Kaplan, West Bloomfield Township Supervisor. I wish to congratulate Civic Center TV for reaching 1 million views on YouTube. Civic Center TV is very important to our community. I know many residents watch Civic Center TV. They receive engaging and interesting and informative program. Civic Center TV is one of the jewels in West Bloomfield. I am Steve Kaplan. I am proud to be one in a million. And now, back to the splash, live. Hi, local and social. It's the Splash live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Kevin McIntosh. Bring the whole family out for an unforgettable day of excitement and laughter at our Family Fun Day featuring the Chamberlain Pony Rides that will be there and the Petting Zoo, Trackless Royal Express, face painting, activities, giveaways, so much more. It's the 13th annual Family Fun Night at West Bloomfield High School. With me right here live on the Splash to give out the details about all the fun we will have. We have the coordinator for w WBSD's Family Fun Day, Julie Beatty. Thank you for being here, Julie. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So we're talking about the 13th annual Family Fun Day. Can you share some insights for the planning process for what we're expecting this year? Yeah, well, the process is actually a long one. We meet throughout the entire year. So we mm -hmm. always try to um, determine what worked, what didn't work, and how to improve the experience for the community, especially for the kids. So we always want to make sure that we have a lot of activities that are age appropriate for all of our students. So as you can imagine, that um, takes a lot of planning to make sure that our eight-year-olds are entertained as much as our 18-year-olds. So, yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, so we're almost to the end. We have a couple more meetings for this one, okay. and uh, we're super excited to bring this opportunity back to the community. Yay. Okay, so since we're... We're talking about the 13th annual, which means there was a 12th annual. Let's get into any, are there any big changes from last year or any previous events that we're expecting this year? We are going to have all of the armed forces represented this year, which we mm. are extremely excited about. So they will be bringing things like climbing walls, um, different activities, uh, pull-up bars, um, they possibly might be bringing some um, dog tags that you can make your own personal dog Ooh. tags. And there's a surprise we we don't want to leak out yet that we're hoping uh, happens. So if you want to know what the surprise is, you have to come out on the uh, <laughs> Thursday the 29th. Okay, Shh. I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. I hope maybe you'll tell me in my ear later. But yes, be but, quiet. But that's <laughs> that's more excitement for people to come out there and see exactly what the surprise is. But I'm glad you mentioned the military, by the way, with me right here live on the Splash. We have coordinator for West Bloomfield School District's Family Fun Day, Julie Beatty. How did the idea of saluting the U.S. military come about? That actually was one of the original components for the program. So um, it actually, hmm. this was founded by myself, Nancy Cooper, and Pat Watson, who was the principal of the high school at the time. And we really wanted to focus on creating this Friday night lights kind of experience for West Bloomfield. And back then our football team was not as extraordinary as they are now. And so we really wanted to drive the community to come in and um, experience the high school, experience the football team, mm -hmm. really create that kind of small town environment across multiple different communities. Because as you know, West Bloomfield School District covers four different communities. Correct. So part of that conversation was, how do we take this initial um, goal of creating a community event around our football games, but have a little bit more depth and meaning to it? And that's when we decided 
we really would love to give back to the men and women who serve our country and put their go. lives on the line and and voluntarily that's that's i think is amazing about our armed forces it's voluntary and um so we decided all right we want to be able to recognize the men and women in our military but also those men and women who live in our communities who also put their lives on the line to, to um, protect us so the police and the fire and actually during covid we also were really recognizing a lot of the um, medical community as mm -hmm. well anybody who's putting themselves out there to protect the rest of us yep. we wanted to make sure that we were recognizing and acknowledging that we as a community appreciate and want to give back at least on one day to them and recognize them. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I am all for that. These are all people uh, or uh, um, occupations, people that occupy these occupations that deserve that recognition, that deserve that appreciation. They don't necessarily get that appreciation every day. And every day they're putting their lives on the line or saving ours. So I, I yes. applaud first and foremost, that effort to do that. And I'm glad you clarified that. Let's get into the community side of it. How do you feel the community and local businesses have contributed to the success and longevity of Family Fun Day? It's critical, right? That everybody, the community and the local um, businesses and local uh, community um, services mm -hmm. uh, participate in this. And this, we get great feedback from the community. Nice. Uh, this is our only district-wide event. And it really is nice where all the schools come together, but it's not just the schools, right? As mm -hmm. you were saying, as we mentioned just now, we have the armed forces, we have the um, police, we have the fire, but we also have the different township leaders that will also be there. We have the Parks and Recs, we have the Library, we have the Historical Society, the Rotary Club, um, our Children's Fund, Youth Assistance. Wow. We try to bring in anybody who partners with the school district and is a community leader. So we also have Henry Ford Health there. Caring Smiles comes in and supports us. We have Michigan um, Chiropractic. We also have Jets Pizza. Mm. Um, Keep the Harbor Optimist. So then we have also then the school district. We have the students showing up, like the lacrosse team, the sailing team. We have the theater coming out to do face painting for the um, younger students. We have our Lego League robotics that show up. So we really try to go from the greater community. Right all the way down to our schools and our students being involved, not just showing up to have a great time, which I hope they all do, mm -hmm. but also to be an integral part of the program. Gotcha. And having them be that integral part is what I think gives to the longevity yes. of the program itself. And, and I, really creates that community. Yeah, no, and you spoke, you said it the perfect way. I couldn't explain it better. Essentially, everyone coming. To, I'm sorry, you kind of had me at Jets Pizza. That's been on my mind. But essentially, everybody coming together to make this happen and make it possible to enjoy yourself is that's what it means ultimately. Julie, we gotta go. I do appreciate your time. But lastly, real quick, the details about Family Fun Day coming up in West Bloomfield. Yes, August 29th. Um, show up. Of, we officially start at five. If you want to come a little early, that's totally okay. Um, as I said, we're going to have all the armed forces here this year. We're going to have bounce houses, face painting. Hopefully we're on that rock climbing wall. We're talking about possibly having a video semi truck there. So come on down, be part of the community, enjoy the experience, get to um, go to that football game and mm -hmm. recognize women of service that's right thank you again so much we appreciate your time and that information once again julie Beatty, coordinator for the west bloomfield school district's family fun day thursday august 29th we appreciate your time thank you so much have a great day absolutely you have a better one also and do remember also that we will be airing that game live west bloomfield high school lakers against chippewa valley thursday august 29th 7 p.m west bloomfield high school we will be there and supporting we have so much more to talk about but right now we are going to wrap up we appreciate you for joining watching and listening once again we are live local and social it's the splash live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM.